According to John. Glory to you, o Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the King of the Jews? Jesus answered, do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priest handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, My kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus For those of you who I haven't had the privilege of meeting yet, my name is Deacon Rourke, or Rory Trainer. I'm a seminarian for the Diocese of Manchester. Uh, and as a transitional deacon, that means that, God willing, in the beginning of June of this coming year, I'll be ordained a priest. But today, oh, well, thank you. Yeah, applaud now. You're not going to applaud after I'm done. So today is the feast of Christ the King. And to be honest with you, it's, it's one of those feasts that make no sense to me. In fact, it seems rather obvious as a Christian. Saying that Christ is King is kind of like saying that water is wet. It seems obvious. But today's Gospel might give us a way to enter into this feast more deeply. It is sort of a collision of worlds. Let's set the scene. Rome. Rome is the most powerful empire in its time. Quite literally unstoppable. No one in the first century could imagine the fall of such an empire. However, Rome is not properly called an empire. It's a republic. The SPQR that you see in their flags in movies and documentaries stood for Senatus Populusque Romanus, the Senate and the people of Rome. They had a system of senators, representatives for the people. Virtually unheard of in its time, only the Greeks had done something similar, but let's be honest, they didn't do it as well as the Romans did. Rome basically invented sanitation, or at the very least perfected it. They created the aqueduct, which brought in clean water into cities. They had pu public bathhouses and sewage systems. Essentially, they made cities work. They reimagined what it meant to live in the world. It not only took care of the health and political aspects of its people, but Rome also tended to the morality of its people. It saw that in order for an empire to work, it needed a moral system. Pax Romana, it's called, the peace of Rome. This was a system where 
people needed to look after each other. They were expectations of family members. Fathers could not abandon their children without consequences, legal consequences. Adopted children had certain rights that Roman law would protect. There was a sense of patriotism, a sense that this was not Rome in some distant land telling us what to do. We were all part of Rome. That is, Rome dwelt within us. We are Romans. So you can imagine the utter bewilderment of someone like Pilate when he asked the question, are you the king of the Jews? He's probably thinking something along the lines of, this Jewish kingdom can't be very powerful. It will be a minor thorn in the side of Rome. Something we'll need to crush, but not a big problem. And imagine his surprise when Christ Jesus answers, my kingdom is not of this world. Indeed, it is not of this world. Instead, it encompasses this world. It envelops this world. It drills through the very heart of this world and tells this world what it means to be a world. The kingdom of Christ is not a kingdom by the standards of Rome. It is a kingdom by the standards of the one who allows people like Pilate to breathe the air of the world. Rome did many wonderful things, as do most nations. They guide and govern their people as well they should. But we as Christians are under no illusions. We belong to another, more powerful kingdom. Rome was a republic. Granted, Christ's kingdom is not a republic, it is a kingdom. But where Rome had to find ways for people to be represented in its political body, Christ Jesus gave his very body to make us his members, his hands, his feet, his eyes, his ears. That is how we are represented in the kingdom of God. Not at the mercy of some representative who may or may not defend my rights. Christ dwells within me. Rome, because of its great advancements in sanitation, made cities functional. Christ surpassed that. He has, made, he has cleansed us from the very depths of our existence in the waters of baptism. We are now full members of that kingdom. And when this goes awry, when the sewage and the filth of this life clings to us, and we lose our cleanliness, he gives us the grace of confession so that we can be restored. That's how he makes a city functional, by making its members fully alive, by the one who gives us life. Rome had moral laws. Fantastic. But as followers of Christ, our faith is more than a moral system. Ours is a path of life. The system that we follow governs our morality because it is the, the direction that leads us to becoming human. Is this merely a homily pointing out the obvious? I hope so. Because it should be obvious to us how supremely powerful, awe-inspiring, and preeminent Christ Jesus is. Whatever other empires have tried to accomplish, or even indeed have accomplished, it is but a pale reflection of what our King has accomplished. I said earlier that everyone in the Roman Empire could, in a way, and rightly, say we are Rome, or better, I am Rome. But where is Rome today? If we were to look over the Palatine Hill, the birthplace of the Roman Empire, we would see nothing. But on the Vatican Hill, ah, sits the Pope of Rome, the visible head of Christ on the earth. Christ Jesus still governs this world. My friends, on this feast of Christ the King, we claim our birthright once again. And as we march forward into the triumphant season of Advent, when our King shall come, let us prepare our hearts and our mind, loving only what our King loves and thinking only what our King thinks. Let us push out every desire and thought 
of anger, lust, hatred, jealousy, and whatever else that is not of the mind of our king. For our king is not in some far-off, distant land. No, he's right here at this altar. We are a part of him by virtue of our baptism. We are Christians. We are Christ-bearers because Christ's kingdom dwells within us. Glory to you, O King of kings and Lord of lords. Glory to you, Jesus Christ, King of the universe. Regina Jenny, letare, alleluia, qui aque meruisti portare, alleluia, resurrexit sicut dixit, alleluia, ora pro nobis deum, alleluia.